welcome to Zagana's Petting Zoo. I hope you're excited to bring your kids so they can all go pet Sharkto Crab. He's just a bit, he looks dangerous, but he's just a big sweet dummy. But uh, but yes, welcome to Zagana's Petting Zoo. So let's start with Zagana herself. Yeah, don't bring your kids to Sharkto Crab, he'll eat them. Uh, we have Zagana, it's going to be four total mana. Uh, whenever Zagana enters the battlefield, if you control another creature with a plus one counter on it, draw a card. Then for a six mana activation, adapt for four. And then each creature you control with a plus one counter on it has trample. Now, the one thing to take away from Zagana is that basically this is just a, we're using her for the each creature you control with a plus one counter and it has trample. That's about it. Um, it is nice that she does enter the battlefield. We get to draw a card. It is nice that she has a pretty heavy activated a cost of adapt for four for six total mana. But what we're really building this deck around is making sure that once we get down a lot of creatures with plus one counters, we want to be able to give them trample because that's hopefully going to be kind of like the crater hoof effect that we're trying to build up. And, you know, it is nice to be able to draw a card off your commander once, she, once uh, they enter the battlefield. But uh, where this deck is really built is around the plus one counter theme. And so we're going to spend a lot of time actually looking at some of the core concepts of the deck. Now, once you walk into the petting zoo, there's going to be a lot of different animals you may not be used to seeing. Uh, we've got Hydrocrasis, we've got Galloping Lizrog. Um, Hydrocrasis is a wonderful card to get down at uh, any point in the game. Well, later in the game, it actually works out a lot better. Um, but you want to tap out for as much mana as you can, draw a bunch of cards, and gain a bunch of life. Then the fact that it does have flying and trample, that's going to make sure your petting zoo is off to a smashing hit. Uh, Galloping Lizrog, uh, whenever it enters the battlefield, you can move any number of counters onto it and it does have trample. So that's kind of a fun way to, if you can somehow sneak it in with Rogue's Passage, you can end up with a lot of plus one counters on that. And plus it's a frog lizard, so it's always fun. Uh, moving on to the next just random creatures in the petting zoo, we have Sharkto Crab and Master Biomancer. Um, some of these cards, I'm not going to spend too much time on it. You know, Sharkto Crab's in here because it's a fish octopus crab, so... That's kind of what, I mean, it does have the tap ability, but it's in here because it's Sharkto Crab, and I, I really like that. Uh, we're also running Master Biomancer, which is really good in this deck. Um, each creature you control enters the battlefield with a number of plus one counters on it equal to its power, and it's a mutant in addition to its other types. So let's say we have Master Biomancer on the battlefield. It is a 2-4. Uh, we have Sharkto Crab enter the battlefield as a 4-4. Four, four. It's going to get two plus one counters because of Master Biomancer's power. Now let's say that we have Bio Shift, and we kind of shift some counters onto Master Biomancer. Um, let's say there's four on there. Uh, that's going to make Sharkto Crab an 8-8, and Sharkto Crab's going to be really happy. So uh, there's a lot of different ways we can take advantage of Master Biomancer, but simply just getting it down for four mana and getting two counters on every single creature is uh, more than enough to run it. And we're also running some really good Hydras in the petting zoo. We have Mana Gorger Hydra. Plop this down on turn three, just... You know, this counts for each player that casts a spell. So as soon as they're casting spells, uh, we get a plus one counter on it. And then it uh, ends up being a trample effect. So it's really hard to deal with unless they have some sort of spot removal. And of course, Hooded Hydra. Um, like I mentioned with Bio Shift, you can shift a bunch of counters on it in response to a board wipe. If you're going to go for that morph. Either way, you're going to end up with a ton of snake tokens on the battlefield. And uh, that's definitely going to make Zagana happy uh, in this particular one. Now let's move on to some of the utility counter creatures that we are running in the deck. We have Forgotten the Ancient. Um... Once again, keeping on theme with that Mana Gorger Hydra. Uh, but yeah, with Forgotten Ancient, uh, whenever a player casts a spell, you may put a plus one counter on Forgotten Ancient. Then at the beginning of your upkeep, you can move any number of counters from it. So as your opponents are casting spells, you're casting spells. That's going to be a wonderful bank for you to build up some plus one counters and then kind of distribute them how you see fit. And of course, Fathom Mage. This is one of the best cards you can run in any sort of counter deck. Um, whenever a plus one counter is put on Fathom Mage, you draw a card. So like I mentioned with Bio Shift, let's say that we should Bio Shift five card. Uh, Five counters on to Fathom Mage. That's going to be five card draw. Um, this is just a really good option. The only downside is it is four mana. Sometimes it's hard to get the evolve going at uh, four mana. But there's a ton of really cool creatures in here, and uh, she's too good not to run in any sort of deck. I'm also running Cytoplast Root Clan. Uh, Kin, which is just a really random creature, uh, whenever it enters the battlefield, put in a plus one counter on it on each other creature you control with a plus one counter on it. Then for a two mana activation, move a plus one counter from target creature onto Root Kin. So this is another way for us to kind of really amplify out. Uh, let's say we built up a really nice board state. We just want to kind of double up those counters. Uh, let's say we have hardened scales on the battlefield. That's really going to amplify out and for four mana that is a really good option and of course let's say that we don't have a board state uh, we can always just kind of set it up for that graft ability to kind of shift those counters around uh, plax caster frogling this is going to be another way for us to kind of make sure we protect our creatures with a plus one counter on it um, we're going to be able to make sure that they gain shroud until end of turn with an activated ability and plus it's a frog mutant 
you go to pet it, he's going to blast you with a hyper beam. Um, Chasm Skulker's in here too, so whenever we draw a card, we get to pl put a plus one counter on it. And it also allows us to give us some sort of board wipe protection, so let's say they do go for a board wipe. Uh, we've had Chasm Skulker draw a bunch of cards. It's going to be a lot of squid tokens uh, with the Island Walk, and hopefully that'll be some uh, really good damage against your opponent. And of course, Spike Weaver enters the battlefield with three plus one counters on it, and then we can remove a plus one counter from it to uh, basically kind of fog out the combat step for the turn. Uh, this is really good. We can basically just keep putting those plus one counters on there, and that's going to allow us to kind of build up our board state. We can get into points where we can swing in for lethal with some trample damage, or simply just allow us to kind of survive uh, turn after turn with Spike Weaver. So, and for a long time, I thought Spike Weaver was a spider, but Spike Weaver is like a little caterpillar. It's like I looked at the art the other day, and I mean, I'm sure probably people know that, but if you look at the art, like, I always thought his head and the branch was his body, but uh, he's a little caterpillar, so if you did not know that, make sure you look in there. I just never knew. Um, one of the other things we are running in this deck is some creatures that kind of fit on with the Zagana theme. Uh, Skatewing Spy and then Herald of Secret Streams. These care about creatures having a plus one counter on it. Uh, with Skatewing Spy, it's going to give our creatures with flying if they have a counter. Uh, Herald's going to make them unblockable if they have a plus one counter. Uh, same thing with Trollbred Guardian. It's kind of the backup commander. Uh, each creature you control with a plus one counter and it has trample. And then we are running Shapers of Nature. Uh, it's not necessarily caring about our counters, our creatures having counters, but it's a good way for us to kind of spend our extra mana and move some counters around, or simply just cash in some card draw late game if we can't get anything going. Now, one of the ways that we can really win or really kind of amplify these counter effects is by winning with counters, and that's going to be Simic Ascendancy. Uh, three mana activated ability, put a plus one counter on target creature you control, then whenever one or more counters are put on a creature you control, put that many growth counters on Simic Ascendancy at the beginning of your upkeep you win the game if you have 20 or more counters on there i will say this we do get this down in one of our gameplay videos and we very try we try to get to that semi consistency i'm not going to tell you what happens but um if you're if you want to see this you should definitely stick around for the gameplay videos but yeah something like this is a ton of fun you get this down um like i mentioned if we get down hardened scales we get to put one counter on a creature that's going to be two because of hardened scales. Uh, we put one counter on Simic Ascendancy that's going to be two because of hardened scales. So once you get down some combination of these enchantments, it really kind of amplifies those plus one counters. And uh, also, as far as this deck goes, if you're really thinking about building it or you build some version of it, um, this deck is not tier one. But it's really fun to pilot, and it's always fun to kind of change up commanders sometimes to where you're building something that is just fun to pilot. And this deck is certainly that, because it's going to play out different every single time. Uh, you know, we may be going for Simic Ascendancy one game, we may be trying to win with Trollbred Guardian. Either way, it's just always going to be a unique experience, and when you're building a counter deck, that's what makes a lot of fun. So if you're on the fence about building Zagana, go for it. I've really enjoyed playing this one. Uh, we're also running Fable of Wolf and Owl and then Hadana's Climb. Uh, Fable's basically just in here for value. You know, we've got a ton of green blue creatures in here. Uh, we get a green spell that's going to be a 2 2 wolf token. Uh, we go for a blue spell that's going to be a bird token. Uh, Hadana's Climb is another thing that we can get this down, kind of slowly start increasing those plus one counters on creatures that may not enter the battlefield with a plus one counter. And then once it does flip, that's going to allow us to turn, you know, a 5 5 creature into some sort of really big. You know, 10 10 creatures can have flying and trample. Well, not necessarily trample, depending on the creature, but um, it's going to be basically putting this huge creature that's going to be a big threat on the battlefield. And your opponent's going to have to deal with it right then and there. Now, another thing that we can do in this deck that really kind of helps us push us into late game is by running some sort of kind of card advantage within the deck that cares about counter. So, Inspiring Call, uh, draw a card for each creature you control with a plus one counter on it. Um, early game, it's not so good, but late game, it is a wonderful way to kind of refuel your hand. And those creatures creatures gain indestructible so it's kind of like a heroic intervention which is always fun to run and then bread for the hunt um every time i got this card down i, I thought about like a mrs baird's bread like here you go take this on the hunt i don't know why but uh, whatever creature you control with a plus one counter it deals combat damage to player you get to draw a card so uh, nothing to write home about it's just simply just a good utility land to get our enchantment to get down to uh, cash in some extra card draw now, for the keepers of the zoo who keep all these animals in check, we're running a Zuri in here. Um, it's just a wonderful way to get a ton of plus one counters on our creatures. And they're also running a Mormory Vig. So, if you want to sound those Simic alarms, um, definitely sound it on Mormory Vig. This is a wonderful thing. You get it down, cast a green creature spell, you can search your library, cast a blue spell, reveal it, put it in your hand. If you're casting like something like a Zuri, that's going to allow you to set up a tutor and a draw. So, uh, Mormory Vig is just absolutely wonderful in this deck, and I highly recommend running it depending 
think no matter what sort of uh, build of Zagana that you're going for. Uh, we're also running Beast Whisper and Champion. Uh, these cards, are basically, you know, Beast Whisper is going to allow us to cash in a, t a ton of card draw. We've got a ton of creatures in here. And then Champion's going to make it to where it's going to be really hard for our opponent to stop our creatures swinging in for combat damage. Now, onto the closers. We are not running Crater Hoof in here, but we are running in raise four runners, which is kind of like the more fair version of Crater Hoof. Um, depending on how a deck kind of plays out, how explosive it is. I'll run Crater Hoof in there. But for a deck like this, where it's just going to be a lot of fun, we get to get Boars on the battlefield. Uh, in is going to be taking the Crater Hoof slot. And then, of course, one of my favorite cards, uh, Thunderfoot Bayloth. It has Trample. And then as long as our commander's on the battlefield, it gets plus two, plus two. And then other creatures you control get plus two, plus two, and gain Trample. For six mana, I'd love that effect. It pumps up your entire board, and it's just it's just fun. You get this down. If they don't have an answer for it, you can definitely swing in and deal a ton of damage to your opponent. But that is going to be it for the deck tech. I have some awesome gameplay videos for you to stick around and watch. So enjoy them. Welcome to Zagana's Petting Zoo. We've got Sound the Simic Alarms on both sides of the battlefield, and I am pumped for that. And as far as opening hand goes, it's... Yeah. Yeah, it's a little clunky, but we'll keep on this one. I like that. We got Guy's Cradle in here. I kind of forgot that was... Uh, I forgot it was legal again when I was building the deck. So I was like, hey, that is perfect. So we'll see what sort of fun stuff we can get going on our side of the battlefield. And uh, I'm not going to lie, Rashmi's over there. She is uh, really good at sounding those Simic Alarms. So let's go and lead off with Windswept Teeth. In fact, let's go and crack. Uh, we'll go and grab Breeding Pool. That way we can have that come into play tapped. And I will not forget about it uh, while we're covering our commanders. We're playing Zagana. The official keeper of the petting zoo. Uh, whenever Zagana enters the battlefield, uh, if you control another creature with a plus one counter and a draw card, then for a six mana activation, adapt for four, put four plus one counters on it. Then each creature you control with a plus one counter on it has trample. And look at that. I got the new breeding pool art on it. Looks so good. And we've got Guy's Cradle with no creatures. So I guess at this point, we just kind of lead off with uh, Blighted Cataract. And then next turn, we can go for Forgotten Ancient. I think that'll be good. All right, then we'll go and pass the turn to our opponent. Uh, we're playing against Rashmi, the Eternity's Crafter. Uh, whenever you cast your first spell each turn, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a non-aid card with converting mana cost less than that spell, you may cast it without paying its mana cost. Then if you don't cast the reveal card, put it into your hand. Uh, let's give a quick shout out to our sponsors, MTGO Traders. If you want to get into Commander Online, Check out MTGO Traders. They have a wonderful selection of uh, any sort of petting zoo cards that you may want to build your own self. And uh, right now is the time to get in because prices on Magic Online are very, very low. And uh, to be perfectly honest, and this is not like a sad commercial during late night TV where they show sad puppies, but there's not a lot of people on Magic Online. So uh, if you're on the fence about getting into it, uh, I'm not going to lie. It'd be pretty cool to see some more people in here. So uh, the only way we make sure that Magic Online doesn't go away is by getting people to keep playing it. Because if the player base, the, the player base dwindles, then uh, we're not gonna Magic Online's not gonna be here anymore. It's kind of sad. Sad to think about. Uh, let's get down Ancient Tomb. Man, I feel like we're just running into a counter spell at this point, but um, let's just go and go for it. It's going to be one, two, three off of Ancient Tomb. And once we get down that Forgotten Ancient, that'll allow us to at least kind of get down um, Guy's Cradle next turn. And we can end up going for Guild of Lotus to kind of open us up on a little bit more colored mana. And also, let's give a shout out to IntGaming.com. Use coupon code JOLT to get 10% off your order and also go back to help the channel. So let's say you're in the market for a custom playmat. Uh, they make custom playmats, so definitely check them out. And uh, let's say you really enjoy one of my thumbnails and you're going to use my thumbnail art as a desktop wallpaper on your home computer for personal use only. I've started to put all of those images in the description down below. So if you want to show it off to your friends next time you see them to play Magic, uh, to show them your computer wallpaper, um, get at it, have some fun. And that's going to be it. Uh, it is free time. We can officially talk about whatever we want now. All right, so we've forgotten the ancient. Um, let's see. So we get down Guy's Cradle. We can definitely tap down for one. Yeah, let's do that. So let's go for Gilded Lotus. That's going to be Guy's Cradle and then Kynarak and then Ancient Tomb. One, two, three. So that'll basically just kind of open us up on mana. We can actually end up going for Nissa, Voice of Zendikar. And uh, yes, we're going to use that ability. And that's also going to allow us to basically kind of start plussing up, get those plant tokens going. It's going to end up with a really nice guy's cradle too. So unless they've got some sort of counter spell, I, I certainly... Uh... All right, there we go. Let's go triple green off Gilded Lotus. Get down Nissa. And it feels pretty good to be getting off to a really good start against Rashmi. I cannot tell you how many times I've been on the other end of Rashmi just like power punching us with her thunder fist over there. Uh, yes, we're going to use that ability on Forgotten Ancient. Get down Nissa. I uh, will go for the plus one ability. And we're just going to 
start feeding guys cradle with a bunch of plant tokens. Um, I guess at this point, do we need to worry about even if they've got a flash creature? Uh, it's, we've got a two five body. I mean, unless they've got if they've got ambush viper, then they they deserve to get forgotten ancient. And then uh, I always hate swinging in for two because I'm like I'd rather not swing in for two. But you know, at the end of the day, that little two points of damage uh, certainly does matter at the end of the game. Okay, we've covered sponsor. We talked about the commanders. It is free time. Uh, we can talk about whatever we want. That's going to be this deck. So, um, just a little bit of a heads up. This deck is certainly uh, more towards the just what kind of fun stuff can we do. Um, this is not what I would consider a high tier deck. Um, this is mainly just can we get down troll guarding? Can we go for simic ascendancy? Can we get down a huge forgotten ancient? It's just kind of what kind of stuff can we develop on the board state? And in my place testing, I've realized that. Um, <laughs> opponent's going to steal our Forgotten Ancient. I realize that this deck's not super good, but I want to keep playing it because it's a lot of fun. And then actually Zagana out of the command zone is not that bad being able to get that card draw. So we'll take it. Um, oh, that drives me nuts. And I don't think, I hate it when people steal my creatures. <laughs> it does. That does drive me nuts. Let's go for the plus one abilities. Get that plant token down. Okay, so we get down. That's going to be two. We can go for. We actually kind of open this up pretty good. Uh, we need to get Zagana down with a plus one counter. So we may end up having to get down Trollbred Guardian. That's going to be triple green. Yeah, let's go for Trollbred Guardian. That that's going to be. Uh, <laughs> I think I just said bread, like uh, you would eat. But uh, let's go for the. Yeah, they're going to be able to get that forgotten ancient, forgotten ancient trigger, and that's going to definitely allow them that sower of temptation. Uh, so we can tap down Guy's Cradle for three. We still even have the land drop two to get down. Yeah, so we go for. I'm trying to make sure that we can adapt for two, make it a seven seven, and still get down Simic Ascendancy. We'd have to basically. Yeah, let's do it this way. So we end up tapping down for blue. That's going to be Simic Ascendancy with that last blue mana. It's going to be additional plus one counter on Forgotten Ancient. And then we'll uh, get down Simic Ascendancy. And once we go for this adapt with the Trollbred Guardian, that'll definitely allow us to... Uh, there we go. We're going to make it a 7-7 seven, seven with Tramp. Oh, look at that. Put a plus one counter on Simic Ascendancy. And then we'll get down Lana Re uh, Reborn. Because it enters the battlefield tap. There we go. Look at that sequencing. Uh, anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn to our opponent. Now, we're going to go for, definitely go for Zagana next turn. Uh, once we do get down Zagana, that's going to enter the battlefield. We're going to get a card draw. And at the same time, we have a ton of mana. So hopefully we'll be able to adapt for six. That's going to be ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Two. Yeah, we definitely have the mana to go for Zagana and adapt for six. And then let's take a quick look at Sol uh, Simic Ascendancy. Uh, so with the Activated ability off Simic Ascendancy for a three mana activation. Put a plus one counter on target creature. Then whatever one more counters are put on a creature control, put that many counters on Simic. And if we have 20 or more growth counters on it, uh, we win the game. So, pretty cool. Now, unfortunately, our opponent's going to put all the counters on Sower of Temptation. <laughs> it's going to take care of Nissa. That's a bummer. Sorry, Nissa. She did her purpose, though. She got us some uh, a few plant tokens to fuel this guy's cradle, which is definitely nice. And then uh, we'll see what we can get going for next turn. Hopefully, if we... Oh, bribery. Okay. At this point right now, with bribery... Oh, they're stealing stuff from us again. Um, there's This deck is really... Like, we don't have Crater Hoof in here. We have in-race four runners, which eh, at this point right now doesn't sound that good. Uh, we do have Thunderfoot Bailoff. So as far as, like, the big payoff creature, I would assume Thunderfoot Bailoff would probably be their option to go for. Uh, especially if they're going to be stealing creatures, because once they get down Rashmi, um, they can get down Thunderfoot Bailoff. But outside of that, it's not... There's a lot of just... You know, a lot of these cards work well with each other. You know, something like Wild Beastmaster or even, well, actually, Mana Gorger Hydra would definitely be a good option for them to grab. Um, let's just go ahead and let them kind of decide what they get, what they want to get. And once they enter the battlefield, we'll talk about it. Okay, and they do to get down, end up getting down. Oh, yeah, more, more Vig is a certainly good option to grab them off of that. Uh, no, we're not going to put a plus one counter on it. So um, this is definitely getting off to a pretty fun start. So we might try to end up trying to win with Simic Ascendancy if Paul. Ooh. Yeah, hardened scales. Oh, yeah. All right, so let's get down Polluted Delta. Yeah, let's do that. So let's get down Zagana. I think we're going to have to go for that Ascendancy. It's going to be tight. It's going to be close. Um, let's go triple. Actually, do we need to sequence this any certain way with getting down hardened scales first? I don't think so. Um, let's just go and get down. 
Yeah, let's get down Hardened Scales first. It's going to be another plus one counter they can put over onto that other creature, which is kind of a bummer, but if we're going for Simic Ascendancy, this is the best way to uh, <laughs> kind of get, get it going. Uh, let's crack Pluto Delta. We're going to grab Tropical Island. Uh, let's go for Zagana. It's going to be Triple Blue and then Tropical Island. And actually, yeah, we can still go for Guy's Cradle activation, so that'll be good. So we end up going for Zagana. Let's see, can you imagine if we had forgotten Ancient out here? Oh my goodness. That'd be so good. And then we still do have the Simic Ascendancy activations that we can go for too. So uh, we probably should have uh, sequenced that just a little bit better using that blue mana to go for those activated abilities. But we'll try to go for that next time. All right, so we'll get down Zagana. We're going to get the uh, Graft ability. Definitely want to use that Graft ability. Put that on the stack first. We're going to go for Zagana, draw a card. Temple of Mystery. Yes, we're going to move that counter over onto Zagana. Oh, no, we should have adapted. Well, either way, it's it's okay. It's going to put it at four total counters, and that'll still allow us to end up going for the Simic Ascendancy, so that didn't really miss out too much. So we'll go for the Activated Ability. And I guess we can actually just start putting a bunch of counters on Troll over there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he would really love that. That'll make it a 9-9. Nine, nine. That'll be a few more counters on Simic Ascendancy. Okay. And then let's just go and swing in with a 9-9. Nine, nine. Big old troll frog over there. Love it. All right, swing in for a 9-9. Nine, nine. That's going to be a 3-6. And they have more more Vig over there if they want to block. But um, at this point, hopefully we can get in for 9. All right, so we're going to get in for 9, knock them down to uh, 16. And then anything else, pass it back over to our opponent. Now, as far as how much blue mana we do have, that's going to be three off of Gilded Lotus, uh, four with Tropical Island, and then five with Breeding Pool. Guy's Cradle is going to be tapping down for four. So we can probably get into the neighborhood of maybe two or three Simic uh, activations, kind of depending on what we draw into. But um, you definitely see, you know, this is what I'm talking about. You know, we may not end up winning this game, but uh, being able to get on Simic Ascendancy and threaten the win with hardened scales, that feels pretty good. Now, it's, ooh, oh, this is maximum sound the Simic alarms. Uh, with Simic Ascendancy, and it's going to be at the beginning of our upkeep. So um, we have to get it at the end of a turn and have it triggered at the beginning of our upkeep. So that's definitely something to kind of keep in mind. But uh, we'll see what they end up searching for with uh, more, more Vig, and then we'll kind of discuss what our options are. But yeah, this is... Uh, <laughs> it's it's not... Well, it's looking okay. So if you're keeping score at home, it's looking okay. You can definitely check that box. But, um, you know, you may want to pencil in. It's not looking good. That's kind of where this is headed. But let's let's see what they end up doing with more, more Vig. Oh, and just brutal. They end up going for Gilded Drake, which is just <laughs> pretty pretty gnarly. Now, let's see if they do end up swinging with the Sword of Temptation. It is a 7-7, seven, seven, which is certainly... Okay, yeah, they're going to hold back. That's going to be some mad uh, troll, troll bread Guardian respect right there. Okay, so let's see what we draw into. Drawn to Altered Ego. Okay, well, that is... Hmm... Okay, so let's do... So we go for Sower of Temptation. So we can make a copy of Sower, gain control of Forgotten Ancient. We get into, end up getting a ton of counters. So let's see. So with Simic Ascendancy, whenever one or more counters are put on a creature you control, put that many on there. So let's say we tap out for Alter Ego. That's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's going to be 16 counters on there. Will that be enough? Yeah, so we tap down for Alter Ego, and then as far as the counter is going to go, that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's going to be 19 counters on Altered Ego. Excuse me, it's going to be 18 counters. I think that's going to be enough. Yeah, let's go for Altered Ego. Yeah, let's do that. It's going to be Triple Blue off Tropical Island. And we're just going to tap out for the entire crew on this one. And I think what we end up doing is we go Altered Ego. Yeah, on Sower Temptation, because it has flying. Yeah, we need to go for this. All right, we're going to have Altered Ego enter the battle as a copy of Sower Temptation. We're going to be able to um, gain control of one of their creatures. I think at this point, if we want to stop them from drawing cards, it might be worth our... our it might be worth it just to grab Tat Yova, because we don't want them to draw a ton of cards. I think that might be the better line of play to go for. So let's grab Tat Yova. Uh, we're going to steal Tat Yova. 
Yeah, because if they're going to find an answer, they're going to have to dig for it. Uh, so we're going to get all those counters on Simic Ascendancy. It's going to put it at 16 total counters. Let's get down um, the Temple of Mystery. And we'll go ahead and put um, Tat Yova's ability on the stack first. We'll go for Temple of Mystery. Get the scry, and then we'll be able to draw a card. Um, Rogue's Passage with a 12-12. That might be enough. Yeah, let's go and leave that on top. Even if we can't get the Simic Ascendancy win, we'll at least get an extra card draw. Now, here's the kicker. Do we want to swing in with Troll Red Guardian? That's going to be a 9-9. That's going to force the block from Sower at the very bare minimum. And if we're banking on a Rogue's Passage for next turn... Because I can't really see them wanting to block with... Yeah, let's go and push him with Troll Red. I don't like swinging with Zagana, but if we swing it with a 9-9, it's just not really... A a ton of good blocks for them to go for. Even if they double block with Sower Forgotten, we can at least stop them. And then with Rogue's Passage, we can get down Rogue's Passage next turn and swing in for um, for Lethal. And then plus with the plus one counters, um, that'll be pretty good. All right, anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn over our opponent. So we've got 16 counters on Sultai Ascendancy. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, we've won the game. This is... Uh... <laughs> This is exactly what we wanted to see. Get down to Altered Ego. And sorry if I kind of messed up that quick math real quick. Uh, one of the hard things to do, and I don't know why, but just kind of anticipating plus one counters while you're giving commentary and doing live gameplay, it's just it's just rough sometimes. It's hard to do that. All right, so they are sitting at seven. So even if they do end up gaining control of Sword of Temptation, let's say they grab Troll Bread, um, either way, once we get down Rogue's Passage, hopefully we have at least some sort of creature that we can swing in and deal lethal. Worst case scenario, we have Simic Ascendancy to put a plus one counter on our creature, and we'll be good, be good to go from there. All right, so we'll end up grabbing our Sower of Temptation. And that's going to put them at just basically three mana left over. So I think I think I kind of like this. So let's see what they end up tapping out for. Hopefully this Rogue's Passage should... Uh, and this is pretty much why I put Rogue's Passage in here, was... Oh, they do end up having Reclamation Sage. Uh, was for the exact reason of, let's say we end up building some sort of weird board state where we get a ton of counters on a creature. Uh, being able to make a creature unblockable with a ton of counters is uh, definitely a way to close it out, and this is pretty much the reason why I put uh, Rogue's Passage in here. So um, if you're ever building a commander deck and you don't really have a set way to do something, um, or, you know I mean, like, why would you put Rogue's Passage in a deck like this? You know, if you're going to have big creatures on the battlefield, uh, Rogue's Passage in this one uh, might win us the game, but it looks like it is going to. But we'll see what they, they have in store for us. But at least at this point right now, we should be able to go for that. Right, so they're going to go for Reclamation Sage. Uh, I'm kind of glad that we only got 16 counters on Sultai Ascendancy. I mean, on Simic Ascendancy, because if we did end up getting uh, 20 counters on there, I would have been so heartbroken that they uh, they were able to do that. Okay, so they're going to pass the turn. They have no mana. Um, I'm pretty sure we just win swinging in with uh, Trollbred Guardian. So I like that. Let's get down Rogue's Passage. Let's go cash in a card draw with Tat Yova. Oh, that was just... Oh, and then Heroic Intervention. All right, so we're going to go for Trollbred Guardian. So we've got even Super Secret back up off of this. Um, Temple of Mystery and then Gilded Lotus. Actually, we'll just tap down Guy's Cradle. We're going to make um, Trollbred Guardian unblockable. It's going to be a 9-9. And then uh, we'll see if they have anything else to offer up, but that should be it. Even if they do have some sort of instant speed exile a card from their hand, we still have Heroic Intervention backup. So uh, let's go and swing it with Troll Bread Guardian. Feels so good to win with the Troll Frog Warrior. That's exactly what we need to be seeing. So let's go and swing it with the 9 9 and then uh, deal some damage to our opponent. All right, opponents are going to scoop it up on this one. Good game to our opponent. Uh, you can definitely see where um, it wasn't looking, you know, early. You were keeping score at home. We told you to kind of check the OK box. But um, you can definitely see where we kind of got it done. Feels pretty good to get a little win like this. And, you know, even if you're building a commander like Sagana, which is not that powerful, um, you can still have fun with her. You know, building a fun deck like this, you know, we got our Forgotten Ancient taken. We got Sultai or Civic Ascendancy taken away from us. But uh, we still able to close the game out with the Troll Guardian, 9-9 uh, Trample Unblockable. So, I don't know. That's why I made the deck, to have fun wins like this. So, if you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye. Welcome to Zagana's Petting Zoo. Hope you're excited. As far as opening hand goes, oh, we've got three visits and cultivate, and that is a ton of lands. We'd have to get so lucky on that three visits. Do we want to risk that against Moltrotha? Okay, we're gonna keep. All right, this is not. I don't. I don't recommend this. This is not a good keep. But if we had a colored source of three visits, we are.
in business, and I like that. Um, anything else we're going to go on? We're just going to pray to the magic gods. Sound the Simic alarms, please. Um, pray to the Simic gods for me. Uh, we're playing Zagana, the official keeper of the zoo. Uh, whenever Zagana enters the battlefield, if you control... Well, I mean, that's okay. All right, we're going to go past the turn. So if we at least hit a green source, we'll be on for Cultivate. Uh, we are playing... Yeah, and now we have to pass the turn to our opponent. Like, oh, they kept a one lander. Yes, we did. <laughs> and then a, not even a colored source at that. Uh, we're playing Zagana, the keeper of the petting zoo. In fact, if you want to pet Shark to, Shark to Crab, go for it. Uh, whenever Zagana enters the battlefield, if you control another creature with a plus one counter, draw a card, then for a six mana activation, adapt for four. Each creature you control with a plus one counter on it has trample. So let's see if we... Uh, oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, anything else? We're going to go and pass the turn to our opponent. Uh, each creature you control with the plus one counter, and it has trample. As soon as we hit a color source, we are in business, and we're going to go to town, and we're going to show Moldrotha that we mean uh, we're really serious over here at the petting zoo. Fathom H, okay. Um, we do, we'll have to discard down the hand size. Let's get down Mana Crypt and uh, kick it back over there. Play against Moldrotha, the Swamps of Dominaria. Uh, during each of your turns, you may play up to one permanent type of each permanent type from your graveyard. Uh, so let's say that you're new to magic. What does that mean? Long story short, um, if there's an artifact, enchantment, creature, land, as long as it's a permanent, uh, you can play one out of your graveyard. And I highly recommend building Moldrotha if you have not. It is a ton of fun. We're going to use Tails on this one. One the flip. We are one for one on our Mana Crypt triggers. Well, we can actually get around it. All right, so we're going to get down Ghost Quarter. Um, <laughs> yeah, because we actually, okay, so we're going to add Colorless Mana. We're going to sacrifice Ghost Quarter on Alchemist Refuge. Um, we're going to grab a green source. <laughs> it was kind of fun. I mean, I, I still stand by this keep. I love it. Uh, we're going to get down Forest. Let's go for Cultivate. Actually, if we end up going for green off of three visits... There we go. Bust this thing open. Okay, it's like nothing ever happened. Get down Tropical Island. We're going to go for Cultivate. It's like we're playing Affinity over here or something. Uh, let's go for Cultivate. Uh, let's go Island and let's grab, um, let's grab one more Forest. Yeah, the Forest is fine. Uh, let's have Island enter the battlefield. Forest goes into our hand. And then anything else, we're going to pass the turn to our opponent. So, turn five, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six mana. It's not like anything bad happened, but could have got some stuff down a little bit quicker, but... <laughs> Anyway, we're going to make it work. So we did cover both commanders. It is free, well, almost free time. In fact, let's give a shout out to uh, MTGO Traders, the official sponsor for uh, this channel. In fact, if you want to build your own petting zoo, if you want to sound the Simic alarms on your own, hit up MTGO Traders. They have a ton of cards for you to choose from. And um, yeah, commander price is really low on Magic Online. So if you want to get into Commander Online, and you, you can build like a fully functional deck for like 50 bucks. And if you really think about it, uh, that's like a video game right there, except you get to play it for a long time. So... Get in there. Have some fun. We'll we'll play together. Uh, we're going to choose Tails on this one. Lost the flip. We are one for two on our... Uh, I think we are. I don't know. I can't remember. Um, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. We've got six total mana. So at this point right now, we don't want to lose just a random Underrealm Lich. They've got a really good graveyard going too. Uh, they also did get down Ravenous Chupacabra, so we do have to watch out for that. Let's do this. Let's go for Master Biomancer. Yeah, I think I like that. Get down Master Biomancer. It's going to be one, two. No, let's actually set up Fathom Mage. No, I think that's going to be a better line of play. Let's, let's go for Fathom Mage. If our opponent has Ravenous Chupacabra, they do. And then even if they do, we'll at least get down Force, and that allows us to go for the Repudiate uh, Counter Target Activated Ability. So I like that. And with Fathom Mage getting bigger and bigger... It's going to be more card draw. It's going to uh, evolve with Master Biomancer. It's going to evolve with Zagana. So I kind of like this line of play. This can be pretty good. And, uh, oh. <laughs> there we go. All right, so we're going to counter that spell, um, or at least that triggered ability. And then, but that Dead Bridge Chant, well, let me see what it was. It's a, choose a card at random. It's a creature card put on the battlefield. And all those cards, they hit the one card Ravenous Chupacabra. So, uh, thankfully, we we're able to kind of stop that Ravenous Chupacabra from eating Fathom Mage. Um, outside of that, they don't really have any sort of sack outlet to sacrifice for Ravenous Chupacabra at this point right now. So, we don't have to worry about that returning out of the graveyard. But it will end up being a problem for us if they do have something. In fact, uh, we need to kind of be looking at their graveyard to kind of anticipate some of the stuff that they might have. As far as permanence goes, there's really nothing too crazy. Uh, they do have Tatyova, which is not something 
something we're super excited about seeing on the battlefield with Tat Yova that's not going to be too good. And then, oh, well, they do have Faces Butcher. So if they get down Faces Butcher, um, Exile Target Creature, and then whenever it leaves, they get to return it. So that will allow them to uh, at least kind of go for a little bit of spot removal on Fathom Mage. So at least at this point right now, we're going to try to cash in as much card draw as possible. That sounds like a plan to me. We're going to choose Tails on this Mana Crypt Trigger. Loss of Flip. I think we're one for three on those. And then Wild Beastmaster. Okay. So we get down Master Biomancer. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've got seven total mana to kind of play around with. If we end up going for Zagana, it's simply just going to be a four, four, and we can't really do anything with that. So let's go for Master Biomancer. Gonna have it enter the battlefield. Um, each creature is gonna get, or actually Fathom is gonna get the evolve trigger, and then we can use the uh, bio shift. Hopefully, sometime soon to kind of shift a few more counters over onto Fathom Mage. Yes, we're definitely gonna use that ability, and then we draw into Hooded Hydra. Let's get down Botanical Sanctum. Yeah, I think we're okay with Hooded Hydra simply just for a. Uh, because it's going to enter the battlefield with a few extra counters from the Master Biomancer, and that'll be a good way to kind of shift that over onto uh, Fathom Mage, and at the same time, actually, yeah, if we end up shifting those counters over there, it's not going to do us too much good, so get another counter from Fathom Mage. Yes, we're definitely going to use that ability, and then Kodama's reach. All right, and then we're going to go and pass the turn to our opponent. Now, we have a 3-3, but when we're squaring up against a 6-6, that does not sound too good, so we're going to go and pass the turn. Now, as far as what they can cast out of the graveyard... Um, the problematic permanence that we are kind of looking at at this point right now. Let's get this graveyard. Po oh, look at this. Look at this build. We got Mr. Gitrog over there. Uh, so Faces Butcher is definitely not going to be a good thing for us. Um, as far as any sort of lands, Field of Ruin is, eh, we don't really need to worry about Field of Ruin too bad. Um, thankfully, they can only cast one permanent out of the graveyard. So they kind of have to choose between Tatyova. Um, to be perfectly honest, getting down Gitrog would be a wonderful play because they're going to be able to kind of start casting, uh, at least playing a few extra fetch lands out of their graveyard. All right, so Merciless Executioner. Each player sacrifices a creature. I guess at this point we sacrifice Hooded Hydra because that's going to give us the most value. That's going to give us a few extra counters, and we definitely want to keep... Oh, look at that. Keep him on there with Master Biomancer. Got some beefed up snakes. That's a, that's a good feeling. Cashing in a 3-3 Hooded Hydra for a bunch of snakes. That's really good. And then we'll see what else they decide to bring out of the graveyard. But uh, more than likely, we'll probably see end up seeing some sort of value creature. Yeah, either either way, if you end up going Tatyova or Gitrog, you cannot go wrong there. Well, they're going to go for Thrag Tusk. All right, Let's get the graveyard pop back over there, and so we've got ourselves a very interesting match to say the least. And we're going to go and let them come in for two because we don't want to give them the opportunity to keep casting stuff with Ravenous Chupacabra. So we just don't really want that to die. And there's no really blocks that we can do uh, to take care of that. Now let's go and choose Tails on this one. One the flip. Like that. Now with the Rich Card's Expertise, that's going to allow us to draw three cards. I think. So we end up getting down Island. We go for Prime Speaker for two. That's going to allow us to cash in another card draw, because we certainly have that. That's going to be an additional Evolve Trigger off of Fathom Mage. <laughs> Sharkto Crab, he's here. He's made it. A little late to the party, but we're glad you're here, buddy. And then, yes, we're going to use that ability, draw on another card, draw on the Forest. Um, so between Wild Beastmaster, what we can do is we can get down Wild Beastmaster, because we've got one, two, three, four, five. We've got five total mana. And we have made, yeah, let's get down Wild Beastmaster because that does kind of put us in this weird scenario to where we can bio shift um, some last minute counters on it. Because our creatures with a plus one counter is going to gain trample. I think that's kind of really our only way out from underneath this one. So, yeah, let's just go and pass the turn to our opponent. And uh, we're just simply just going to go and hold up uh, Wild Beastmaster. Yeah, because we end up moving the at least two plus one counters from Wild Beastmaster. Uh, we have Zagana on the battlefield. All of our creatures have trample. And so we get those uh, extra two plus one counters on there. This is going to be like a little mini Wild Crater Hoof Lady in a roundabout way. I just not realize there's bears in there. Why didn't anybody tell me that? <laughs> I used to love Wild Beastmaster, and I never knew there were bears in there. That's, that's kind of wild. I have to put that in Omnath Party Bears, even though we have no way to take advantage of it. Uh, but yeah, so if we end up somehow kind of surviving this turn, uh, we can set up a really nice bio shift with Wild Beastmaster, so that'll, that'll work out pretty well. And then even then, um, let's say something does happen, we can always cash in a Rishkar's Expertise on um, 
you know, something like Zagana to draw six cards. So opponent's going to end up going for, la ooh, go for Languish with the Eternal Witness. Oh, no. Okay, so at least in response to Languish, we can always put plus one counters onto Fathom Mage to have her survive. Um, we could try to put it onto Wild Beadmaster, but we just simply don't really have a way to back away from that. So let's go for, bi uh, yeah, let's go Bio Shift. So we're going to remove the counters from our Snake Token. Yeah, because it doesn't really matter either way. And then we're going to move them on to Fathom Mage. It's going to be one green mana. We're going to take Snake Tokens and put them onto the Fathom Mage. We're definitely going to move two of those over there. And that'll be two extra card draw. And every time I think about Fathom Mage, I think about the time I recorded uh, the EDH Lounge with Mud Stuff. And uh, I'll talk about it here in a second. Oh, man, that was such a good line of play. Um, yeah, that's going to get the rest of the crew. So we're going to end up with Fathom Mage, and that's going to leave Thragtus on the battlefield with a 3-3, and we're just going to be staring down a Moldrotha. Now, if they do end up swinging in with Moldrotha, we might trade on this one, but uh, we'll see what we can get down. Ravenous Chupacabra, okay. And you can see this is the downside to playing against Moldrotha, is that when you have 18 cards in your graveyard, basically your hand turns into a 24-card hand. They've got six cards in the hand, eight cards in the graveyard. That's essentially what it is. So that's one of the, if you're not running graveyard hate, which I never run graveyard hate, uh, that's one. this is definitely one of the downsides to running graveyard hate. So just wanted to highlight that, but I'm still not going to run it because <laughs> I love seeing stuff like this. It feels pretty good. I've been on the other end of graveyard hate too many times. I don't like seeing that. So all right, let's go and choose, uh, choose tails on this Mana Crypt trigger. One the flip. And then draw into Hardened Scales. Okay, so we get down Forgotten Ancient. Actually, we need to get down Hardened Scales first. Yeah, let's do that. So, And then let's get down Forest. Let's go for Forgotten Ancient. That's going to be one, two. Then tap down one more. We go for Chasm Skulker. And unfortunately, we can't cash in any extra card draw at this point right now. But uh, we'll go and put a plus one counter under Forgotten. Yes, we're definitely going to use that ability. It's going to be two counters on there. And that does kind of allow us to get a few squid tokens on the battlefield. Uh, if we do get a few more on there with Island Walk, they do have Watery Grave. So that's another option for us to go for. And then uh, anything else? No, we're going to pass the turn. So... It's not looking good. If you're keeping score at home, you can definitely check the not looking good box. But at this point right now, we've gotten to really see what the deck is definitely capable of. And it's just, um, you know, there's sometimes when I build commander decks and Zagana, this deck is definitely, definitely one of those decks. This is a deck that is just meant to let's have fun. What kind of board state can we develop? Um, and especially if you're going to be playing against something like tier one, like Maldrotha, it's a little hard to bounce back from something like that. But we've had a lot of fun so far and it's it's been pretty good. Yes, we're going to use that ability. And that's going to allow us to get an extra plus one counter on Forgotten Ancient. And we'll probably, ooh, oh, Cyclonic Rift. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that's going to be, that's going to be brutal. It's going to send everything back to the hand. It's going to, we can maybe bounce back from that. We'll see what they decide. Because if they swing in, that's going to be eight. And that'll be 11. That's going to put us down to three. We'll still get the plus one counter on Forgotten Ancient. Yeah, make it a, a very nice creature at six, nine. And then uh, we'll see what we can get going. But it's not looking so hot, to be perfectly honest. Because even if we do try to build back, we end up going for Mana Crypt. Um, that's going to put us almost dead on the next turn. So, But good game to our opponent. Definitely see what a uh, strong showing from Aldrotha is definitely wanting to go for. And that is just overlapping value on so many different ways. Um, just being able to have spot removal out of the graveyard in creature form is uh, pretty good. So if you're on the fence about building Aldrotha, hopefully this video will convince you. All right, they're swinging for three, and then we draw into Pool from Tomorrow. So, I mean, I guess technically, we get down to Hardened Scales. I mean, we'll give it a shot. We'll redeploy everything. Get down to Hardened Scales. Get down to Mana Crypt. We'll go for Forgotten Ancient, because that way we can start cashing in some card draw. That'll be one. We end up going for Prime Speaker... Because we got one, two, three, four, five. We got five total mana. Yeah, we'll go for Prime Speaker. Put a plus one counter on Forgotten Ancient. Yeah, we'll use that ability. Draw a card from uh, Zagana. I think it, we'd have to hit Ancient Tomb or something like that. And then, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and pass the turn to our opponent. But they're going to get it on this one. In fact, we'll go ahead and pop the, uh, the good game up. 
into the chat. There we go. Good game. Well played by our opponent. That Dejavich Chan really uh, dumped a ton of cards into the graveyard. Um, I really enjoy Deadbridge Chan, but I don't run into a lot of my builds because it just seems so expensive at six mana. But uh, I, I need to get it added in there. That's definitely see being able to return cards randomly from your graveyard. And especially if you're running something like a Delve package where you can kind of sculpt your graveyard with Deadbridge Chant, uh, you're definitely doing good. Yes, we're going to use uh, Forgotten Ancient's ability. But like I mentioned, it's uh, it's not doing good. Got Merciless Executioner. They exile one of our creatures, and then they get the sack going. And then that should be lethal. So Yeah, because even if we block on... One of the creatures are getting in. So good game to our opponent. Uh, they're going to get on this one. The Swamps of Moldrotha has definitely pulled down the Zagana Petting Zoo into the graveyard. But we did get a few cool creatures in our hand. Unfortunately, we could not get them uh, on the battlefield and get a ton of value out of them. But if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel for more awesome NFTG content just like this. And make sure to tap the bell icon to be notified whenever a video is made live. If you want to keep watching content, here are two more videos for you. This video and many others are sponsored by MTGO Traders and Cape Fear Games. Buy and sell digital singles to build your online collection today with MTGO Traders, and get your paper singles, accessories, and much more from Cape Fear Games. Whatever your magic needs, both places have you covered.